What's it like to be out in science? To find out, we talked to LGBTQ scientists about their experiences, as well as to researchers studying the issues that queer people in STEM fields face. I've had a mixture of positive, negative, and neutral experiences as a gay man in the natural sciences. I grew up in an area of North Carolina where it was very challenging to come out at a young age and be the only out gay person in my middle and high school for many years. And so I compare that to now living south of San Francisco, working at Stanford, having started an Ostom chapter, giving a talk on the experiences of my community. To me, that speaks volumes to the progress I've seen. So when we think about STEM innovation, uh, we want the best and brightest individuals to be able to stay in STEM and thrive in STEM. And social biases that come into play um, really rob STEM innovation from the kinds of contributions that people from a variety of different backgrounds can make. And so the more diverse our research teams are, the better science that we'll be able to conduct. You asked the question, are LGBTQ plus people underrepresented in science? And the answer is, we don't know because we aren't counted. I suspect we're underrepresented. We've learned that most STEM workers are not out at work. And so a lot of people are showing up to work and going back into the closet in STEM fields. So why is it important that we're visible? Is because people need to have role models. If they see somebody like them and make connections, they're more likely to stay retained and engaged in their profession. Um, and we know this from our personal experience. We also see that the experiences of harassment, being misgendered, having an incorrectly assumed sexual orientation are really common experiences. And so those can be really challenging factors to face on a constant day to day. And they take away our energy to focus on our research, right? Like anytime someone says something, you know, uh, gives you a slight, right? It can be distracting to our work. When LGBTQ students get good individual mentoring from faculty, like a trans student realizes that their professor is willing to use the name and pronouns that they use, uh, or they're able to talk to them about some of these personal issues that uh, they may not feel very comfortable bringing up with their peers, uh, that it really makes a difference for them. And we also see that welcoming climates foster better productivity for all scholars in STEM fields, not just LGBT uh, and non-binary folks, but also straight and cisgender folks who work in STEM fields. In welcoming climates, their productivity metrics that we've measured are also higher. So a welcoming climate benefits all. So I feel optimistic because people who have been in STEM for a long time who are LGBTQ are optimistic. So um, when I talk to folks who have had decades-long careers, who are in their 50s or 60s and have been in STEM for a long time, they see that we've made a lot of progress. And so they can understand this as not necessarily a linear transition, but something that um, is improving over time, even though we might see um, ebbs and flows in that you know, direction toward progress. So I'm an optimist through and through that things will continue to make forward progress if we all keep challenging ourselves to do a little bit more for communities outside of ourselves.